Good evening and welcome to Poland Daily. I'm Natalia Moczulska and this is the news. The Ukrainian president was in Washington yesterday. Volodymyr Zelensky's 10-hour visit to the U.S. included a meeting in the Oval Office with President Joe Biden, a joint press conference at the White House, and an address to Congress. This is Zelensky's first foreign visit since the war began. The purpose of the visit was to strengthen Ukraine's defense capabilities. Volodymyr Zelensky began his historic visit to the United States with a meeting with President Joe Biden. The Ukrainian leader asserted that the war must end with the liberation of the entire country. For me, as president, just peace is not a compromise as to the sovereignty, freedom and territorial integrity of my country. We expect reparations for all damages inflicted by Russian aggression. President Joe Biden announced a transfer of nearly $2 billion in military support to Kiev. Among other things, Ukraine will receive a battery of Patriot missiles. Well, I don't see any reason to believe there will be any lessening of support. And as we reach out to our NATO allies, our Secretary of Defense and our Secretary of State, we get continued support, not only there, but also from around the world, from Japan and many other countries as well. So I feel very good about the solidarity of support for Ukraine. In Congress, Volodymyr Zelensky illustrated the scale of Russian terror. We'll celebrate Christmas. Celebrate Christmas, and even if there is no electricity, the light of our faith in ourselves will not be put out. If Russian... If Russian missiles attack us, we'll do our best to protect ourselves. If they attack us with Iranian drones and our people will have to go to bomb shelters on Christmas Eve, Ukrainians will still sit down at the holiday table and cheer up each other. And we don't, don't have to know every, everyone's wish as we know that all of us, millions of Ukrainians, wish the same. Victory. The United States has stood firmly on the side of the defending Ukraine since the beginning of the war. So far, Washington has given the most support to Kiev of any ally. There is talk of another package of money, humanitarian aid, but above all, aid in military equipment. The idea is to lobby for the transfer of more advanced weapons to Ukraine. Volodymyr Zelensky's speech to the U.S. Congress is being compared to Winston Churchill's 1941 speech when the British Prime Minister appealed to the U.S. to join the war. For Ukrainians, this is a war for everything. This is a war for Central Europe, too. This is a war for sovereignty, to be or not to be. The head of the Gazeta Polska Club in New York, Maciej Rusinski, reassures that there is a consensus in America to support Ukraine. These movements that have sort of questioned American support for Ukraine are sort of smaller, less significant individuals in the Republican Party. But they are no less, and this is causing some uncertainty, or at least in such a general public debate, some hesitation or inquiries as to what this further support will look like. The United States continues to play the role of global hegemon. A defeat of Ukraine could significantly weaken the U.S. position in the world. But there is still a lot of that idealism in politics that we saw a hundred years ago when President Wilson ordered that Poland with access to the sea would be created. And when he helped end World War I, the Americans helped end World War II, and they see that in fact the Russian threat is strategic. The Ukrainians understand very well that Western support is necessary for them to win the war. I think it's very important because our country is suffering from constant missile attacks and airstrikes using Iranian Shahid drones. From what I've read, Patriot missiles can detect missiles as soon as they are launched, which means that with these missiles we will be able to shoot them down at the border. I very much hope that the speech impressed not only Ukrainians. It is not easy to impress us because we have seen a lot. I hope the speech made an even bigger impression on the U.S. Congress. Today, on his way back from the U.S., Volodymyr Zelensky met with the Polish president Andrzej Duda. Meanwhile, the Russians are shelling Ukrainian cities at all times. Missiles have fallen on the Mykolaiv and Dnipropetrovsk regions, among others. The general staff of the Ukrainian armed forces reported that the Russians have already lost more than 100,000 troops since the start of the war.
This is one of the biggest scandals of the Third Republic of Poland. It is about the transfer of 8 billion złote to the detriment of almost 10,000 people and entities. A film about the get-back financial scandal titled Wszystkich Fity Dozwolone, or All Moves Allowed, was created by Sylwester Latkowski. Let's recall what the get-back scandal was all about. Get Back was established in 2012. It was engaged in debt management and its bonds were offered by Idea Bank, among others. The scandal erupted in 2018 when Get Back began negotiations for a 250 million zloty bailout of the company. Almost immediately, the stock exchange halted the shares and the Financial Supervision Commission took an interest in the case. This case would like to be forgotten and even those who once shouted for the establishment of a commission of inquiry are now silent. They no longer want a commission of inquiry. Yesterday, the trial of 10 former employees of Idea Bank SA began before the district court in Lublin. According to investigators, 165 customers of the bank lost more than 30 million złote. This is only part of the scandal, which refers to losses incurred by individuals. Getback based its business on issuing bonds. When the scandal broke, liquidity problems came to light, making it impossible to repay these bonds to customers. There are nearly 10,000 victims. Most of them are private individuals. All this wealth, 30 billion in receivables, was moved out, partly hidden by the owner, the shareholder who has 60 percent of the shares. Because he owns more than 50 percent of the shares, he can do what he wants. This owner is Leszek Czarnecki. Leszek Czarnecki is represented by attorney Roman Giertych. Both are abroad, avoiding Polish justice. There it was directly determined that you and you are guilty to make Leszek Czarnecki innocent, and the script was written by Roman Giertych. Reform of the Financial Supervisory Commission is needed. Economists point out people who hold management positions in banks should be banned for life from sitting in the institution that controls banks in Poland. Presidents of individual financial institutions go to the Financial Supervision Commission or conversely FSC employees, CEOs even. High-functioning managers are going into the financial market. De facto, there can be no full supervision, no full transparency of relations. Sylwester Latkowski production is not of interest to the mainstream media. Practically none of the Polish cinemas were willing to broadcast the documentary. It's also a film about the elites of the People's Republic of Poland, who seamlessly infiltrated the Third Republic of Poland, including the banking sector, says Gazeta Polska Codziennie editor Tomasz Sakiewicz. You can disagree with the message of this film, you may discuss it, but it cannot be that important information, important documents cannot see the light of day, because everyone is afraid of it. And finally, a Polish miniature railway company, Kolejkowo, in Wrocław, Poland, built gingerbread cities as sets for Christmas this year, with buildings decorated in colored icing and trains made of chocolate. The company Kolejkowo has built the sets at its locations in Gliwice and Wrocław in Poland's south and took its inspiration from them. The cities come complete with churches, houses, recreations of the city's medieval town halls and other buildings such as a zoo and a castle. Each one required more than 300 eggs and 360 kilograms or 793 pounds of sugar, as well as hundreds of kilograms of honey and spices. Kolejkovo's CEO at its Gliwice site, Jakub Paczyński, said the gingerbread city there was fully edible and visitors had already begun nibbling away at it. We started creating the gingerbread city in September, so it's been three months and ten people worked on it. The gingerbread city is edible and unfortunately some of it is being eaten by our guests. Around 5 to 10 percent of the gingerbread city is eaten. We will save around 60 percent and we will use it next year. And the remaining 30 percent we will eat ourselves. The cities also feature fairy tale designs inspired by the Brothers Grimm, created by Jovita Woszczyńska, the 2019 winner of an international cake decorating competition. The inspiration for me is fairy tales. In this case, they were the fairy tales of the Brothers Grimm. So I am trying to search for some old prints and books, but I also want it to be my original work. Here for the Kolejkowo project, the inspiration was taken from dolls for children, the ones with big eyes. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Please stay tuned for Poland Daily Weather, Poland Daily Business, and some of our other programs. But for me, it's have a wonderful evening.